Hey, it's Empress Rose and welcome to our collective reading. While I was preparing today, I was looking in my scrying ball and I saw a black swan. This had me thinking about Australia. This had me thinking about polar opposites. This had me thinking about unusual, unexpected, out of the norm, but it's graceful, it's beautiful. And also swans are the gayest animals there are. So <laughs> for some of you, that might be something, but they, as far as percentages, um, they have the most same sex relationships. It's not uncommon for swans anyway, but the black swan. So, and then we're going to look into my giant deck here of Moonology and um, Work Your Light. All right, what do we want to do here? I think we're getting this one. All right. Oh, wow. Oh my goodness. Well, we do have Scorpio season coming up here and we've got a new moon and a full moon in Scorpio. That's why I'm oh my goodnessing. Interesting. Okay, so we have first off um, with Work Your Light, Warrior Woman. Have you answered your deepest calling? So sometimes this can um, mean to me like an actual phone call, <laughs> an actual calling. Um, but wow, she's uh, like suited up. She's got some armor on. She's got this enormous heavy sword. It's very precise. She sees something very precise. She is ready to get what she wants. Have you answered your deepest calling? So, um, I mean, the implication is, and I don't know deepest, that seems like, for me, that would get me all up in my head. I'd be like, is that the deepest one? That one's a pretty, pretty serious calling, but is that the deepest? Like, no, just have you, and it's, we're talking a weekly occurrence here. We're not talking for your whole giant life. There's something you need to do this week and you need to be very um, intentional about it, very precise about it, very clear about what it is that you intend to accomplish uh, right here, right now, and very um, ready to fight for it, I guess, is what I'm seeing. I don't know what that means to you, uh, but there's a strength and a leadership. This is giving very much um, Joan of Arc vibes. So that's gonna be like your calling, not anybody else's calling. That's going to be your communication with the divine. And there might be something, you might be being asked to do something that requires a lot of courage for you this week. And courage, strength, maybe even protecting yourself a little bit as you head into some sort of unknown but very necessary date with destiny. Yeah, protecting herself also, while also uh, making that, making aggressive action. I don't, aggressive's too aggressive a word, but it's like very clear, precise action. It's not easy, it will require courage. Your dreams need a practical plan, full moon in Taurus. So there's gonna be some practical aspects here. Um, this is about the vision that you already have, and this is taking some action, maybe not the first action, maybe not the second action, maybe not the last action, but a step forward that is going to require courage from you this week. Um, and then needing to be very practical about it. Um, so yeah, this is a very earthly step forward. This isn't um, the next step in thinking through something, the next step in feeling your feelings. This is like, a concrete earth-based next step and it's a solid step it's not um, a little dainty dancy step it might be a dance step but it's a solid step it's um, and you need to be very practical um, getting organized making plans um, a list perhaps but more than a list more than plans I see this as um, an, a, an actual step in reality but it does say your dreams need a practical plan so planning also um, how you're going to achieve this calling and it might even be like planning for the fear factor to come in planning to how are you going to deal with anxiety fear and insecurity when it hits 
um, because most likely you're not going to be completely free of that um, at any point in your life. So insecurity can raise its ugly little head from time to time. So we're going to maybe even plan ahead on how to approach anxieties and fears when they come up, especially when they come up in an important situation. Um, so, or part of, part of our plan. So your dreams need a practical plan and some part of this is going to require courage on your part. And then look at these two magical little puppies coming out here. Where I think we have like Scorpio season in maybe two weeks. So, um, and then we have work through your fears, new moon in Scorpio, and it's time to release negativity, full moon in Scorpio. So those, this talks about unknown. This is talking, talking about more of a known situation. So my guess is like, you're going to go from not knowing much about a situation, having taken some steps towards something, not having, not understanding really what it's going to look like or how it's going to come through. But, um, but then over the next week or the course of whenever you get this reading, um, there's going to be a fullness. You're going to see a lot more. It's like almost like a whole cycle in a week, the, um, maybe even two weeks. Maybe this reading's talking about two weeks. I don't know. There's a week, there's two weeks, there's three weeks. So there's something about this time frame that seems important to me. Um, and then work through your fears. Both of the, the scorpion has this defensive mechanism. It can come as a bit of a shock and a surprise how defensive this scorpion can get. Uh, so, but we're talking about fear. We're talking about, it's a water sign. We're talking about emotion, right? And we're talking about courage over here. Well, courage requires fear. It's not courage, uh, if there's no fear involved in it. Um, so you're going to have the, have to have some courage this week. Uh, this actually, the definition of courage requires that fear be in the mix there. Otherwise it's just take going to, you know, I'm not scared to go into my kitchen right now, but if I was scared to go into my kitchen, then I would need to muster my courage and I would need to be courageous. Otherwise it's just walking into my kitchen. Right. So, um, so working through your fears. So yeah, that's exactly actually what we had just <laughs> discussed with your dreams need a practical plan is working through your fears. You have some fears. You need to examine them. You need to look at them. Hold on. We've got, um, cat. All right, so working through your fears, really examining them, maybe even journaling them out. What exactly are you afraid of? What exactly are you worried about? How likely is it? Um, look, and it, the um, interesting thing is that when we're looking at our fears, we're also looking at, um, it also takes courage to look at our fears. So we're working through our fears and it takes that courage to even look at the fears, to even work through them, to even examine them. It's so much um, it's not easier overall, but in the moment we can be like, ah, and just not even look at like, okay, what's that? All right. We've got a bear here. He's got two big claws. All right. Five. Those are like giant. And how am I going to deal with this? Right. Um, I mean, that's a terrible example, but, uh, but working through your fears, looking at them, having the courage to actually look at what you're afraid of, look at how that is going to, how that's affecting you, how that fear is affecting you, how it might be dictating choices that you make. And it can be, uh, it can, it can go, there can be layers and layers and layers. Um, you might not have time to go through all your layers because just being a human on this planet is an inherently frightening situation sometimes. So, um, so working through your fears here, uh, really looking at them, especially as you head into an unknown situation. And then the new moon in Scorpio, we have a new moon in Libra coming up at the end of this week. Actually on my actual birthday, we have a new moon in Libra, but as it hits 1%, it heads into Scorpio. So, um, so that'll be the new ish moon in Scorpio. So, and that's what we've got here too. A new ish moon, about 1% moon in Scorpio and it heads into Scorpio there. So that's interesting. That would be on the 15th. So then we have, uh, it's time to release negativity, full moon in Scorpio. So these are pretty much of a piece we're talking about. Scorpio can often uh, talk about subconscious issues. It is like it, the subconscious issues. It's our death card. It's our death and rebirth card. And here we have sort of a death and here we have a rebirth, right? The um, new moon, the death, well, the new moon would be the death and rebirth. And then here we have the fullness of that situation. And we're both talking about fears 
and negativity it's time to release negativity so those being on this planet involves actually quite a bit of experiences that don't turn out the way we want um, can be very hurtful and to sort of go through those experiences and then at the end of it be like yeah but i believe that i can have other experiences so we have all these experiences they're very real they impact us quite a bit they can create fears about the future um, they can create cynicism and negativity about what can happen here so it's actually incredibly courageous to um to be able to go beyond that and say i'm expecting i expect that this world has many experiences and this these are just some of the ones that i have had so if you've had negative experiences in relationships multiple times perhaps it takes a lot of courage to just even have faith that a po positive um, relationships can happen you know if you've had disastrous friendships um, that have ended very painfully um, it can take a lot of faith and courage to sort of move on into the future and be like yes okay this is what my past is these are real experiences that i've had that have affected me but i'm going to believe that there are other experiences that i have not had that i have the potential to have so that's a little bit of what i'm seeing here with this it's time to release negativity is um, not expecting the worst dropping this defensiveness so you not only are you working through your fears um, and because you, you, something requires you to have some courage this week. So it wants you to be very deliberate about working through your fears and very deliberate about the act of courage. Um, and it wants you to release negativity. So it wants you to, um, be hopeful and, um, let go of those fears. So you're looking at them and you're letting go of them in like a, I don't know, it's like a week from today where we have the new ish moon in Scorpio. Um, and then Scorpio season starts like a week after that. So in two weeks, yeah, in two weeks, Scorpio season starts. All right, and time and I, we don't necessarily have a wonderful relationship, but we do what we can. All right. Oh, I love that. Oh my goodness. Right. Okay. This is why you're dealing with your fears. Now is a great time to deal with your fears because there's nothing to be afraid of here. Um, all is calm upon these shores. So this can be a vacation. This can be a trip to the beach. This can be, um, there's something possible. Well, the conch shell is always very sexual and, um, to me anyway, I think, Tom Robbins um, has a book about that. Oh, I don't remember which one. About the conch shell. It's, it's a little bit lady parts-ish, okay? Um, so all is calm upon these shores, though. There's um, a calmness, a peace, tranquility. It's well-earned. There's been a whole process to get to this level of peace. Right, this is where we're headed, this level of peace. Um, and so all is calm upon these shores. So you don't this is like saying you don't have much to worry about right now um but and so that might be a good time to figure out why you are worried right now or what you are afraid of right now because um because we're getting this all is calm upon the shore so this is about inner peace i think this can also be about outer peace this can be about taking a vacation taking a break from things and just being able to really enjoy the peace that exists in your life and not having the fears um, of other experiences interfere with um, the peace that can exist. So there's always little nuggets of peace. Like um, we can be sort of like effervescent little, like you're, you're like a champagne flute and you kind of have these bubbles of fear, but overall the whole liquid can be peace, it's possible. And then these sort of bubbles of fear and anxiety kind of come through. But, um, but overall the, the main liquid can be peace. All right, a firebird is called to soar, being completely yourself. This has actually reminded me of warrior woman right here. Courageous ability to be yourself and follow your own unique calling. Um, so, and there's a bit of a phoenix element too, which we're already getting here with the Scorpio death and rebirth card. And then we have when the ones you need fly close. Didn't we get this last week? 
So this is about being close to being in close proximity to people you care about, actually physically being around people that you care about and love and making that a priority, perhaps. All of this other stuff, your dreams and your practical plan, warrior woman, firebird, call to soar. And I think even your, these moons in Scorpio are in a way about um, solo work. But maybe these fears are about working through fears about being near others, about closeness, about intimacy and relationships. The other thing I'm seeing right here is we have two bees and we have two scorpions. Both of these are well known for their butt stingers. So, um, yeah. And there's two of each. So there's a pair of maybe some two people here that can be a little stingy, can be a little sharp. But these bees talk about teamwork, about pairing up with other people. It's really interesting, the scorpions and the bees coming here. They're not, neither one of these is well known as being a, um, you know, the cuddliest of critters. But there's a closeness that emerges between them. All right, I'm cutting the deck. From the bottom of the deck, we have Page of Cups new relationship um there's there's a clumsiness here this is a little bit of uh, this is half of the clumsy lovers vibe so this can be emotions someone experiencing new emotions someone um surprised by their feelings and they were not expecting to feel this way but there's a certain acceptance of like whoa okay Okay, that's what's happening. So, and the pages are new and the cups can be relationships and feelings. And the pages are somebody who is new in a relationship, somebody who is new to certain feelings. This can be like a, a young love vibe, um, but it can also be something new. I mean, we're getting the new moon in Scorpio and new emotions, a new relationship. Past, present, inner landscape, what's at issue, environment, to-do list, possible outcome. Interesting. Okay, in the recent past, we have the Hermit card. This is also our Virgo card. We have Scorpio and Virgo prominently featured here. I'd say a little Aries. We've got some Taurus, maybe even some Gemini and these bees, the air signs. <laughs> the air twins all right the hermit card we have virgo here but the hermit this is our saint francis of assisi card in this deck the golden tarot and this the the hermit is taking one step at a time they don't know where they're going they don't have an overall vision they're just trying to stay true to themselves one step at a time to stay true to their unique path an absolutely and completely unique path to them and the only way to take that kind of path is one step at a time. If you're taking a unique path, it's one step at a time. What does Joseph Campbell say? It comes up in here a lot. Um, if you can see the path laid out before you, it's not your path. And that's a little bit of what the Hermit Cards lessons are, is this, um, it's your path. And you know that because you can only see one step at a time or a couple of steps at a time. You don't have the whole vision. So um, as far as major arcana in this deck, in this spread, we have the Hermit and we have the World card, a card of ending, final endings, um, completions, um, birthdays, um, completed projects, a complete, it's not coming back around. You graduated, you don't have to go back to school. You finish the class, you don't have to repeat the class. You are completely done with a relationship. It's not coming back around. Um, when your tarot reader says they're coming back, that's not who this is. So we end actually with the world card of a final ending. Um, so um, solo journey your own unique self, that's where you've been, that's what you've been on, and maybe you've been single because we have this page of cups here too. 
Um, or maybe you haven't had close friends for a while. Maybe you have been working alone, um, working by yourself, and you haven't had a partnership of any kind, professional. I mean, it could, it could relate to any kind, professional, personal, romantic, um, friendship-wise. So there's just, um, I'm hearing the white snake song, here I go again on my own. And that's where you've been. Um, or in some manner moving forward by yourself without, without others, but the, every unique path requires that for a time period again, now and again, um, for a period of time. So, um, to be able to sort of ensure that it is your path in a way, and it's not the freeway, but it's yours. It's your way of moving. So queen of coins, ah, next steps. This is where you're at right now. This is the current situation, looking at next steps, looking forward, making plans. <sighs> Nothing says full moon in Taurus. Your dreams need a practical plan like a queen of coins. This is, this is the practical plan. Actually, these two together, that's what we get, queen of coins. Looking at the next step in their dream, in their calling, and being very practical about it. Uh, the queens can have an introverted vibe, so you may not be talking about it, posting about it, um, maybe talking about it with a few people, but you're, you're not broadcasting this. This isn't some sort of giant statement. I am going to do this. This is sort of you're keeping some sort of dream, some sort of plan on the down low. You're like kind of planning, making practical plans, practical moves, but it's not uh, announceable. We're not announcing anything or even that we're going to be announcing anything my least favorite announcement is when you're announcing that you're going to announce something so um and then we have your hopes your fears your inner landscape three of coins this came up in gemini's reading um last week at some point so anyway three of coins teamwork oh okay look you've been working on your own you'd like to join a team you'd like to connect with some other people you're maybe making some plans to do that. You're figuring out how you can do that, how you can work with other people. This is working with a team, an ensemble, um, a group of people, and everyone has their different roles. It's reminding me of like film work, right? We've got our gaffers, our key grips, our sound engineers, our directors, our um, cameramen, our actors. Everybody's got their roles to play here and they're all sort of working together right we've got the set design here we've got the um actors studying their lines uh we've got this could be a play <laughs> this could be you want to you want to be part of a group and part of a team and not necessarily part of a team where everybody's the same and doing the same activity but part of a team where there's other people coming in there's other people doing stuff maybe you want to hire some people maybe you want to be hired as part of a team um, one thing I love about this is everyone, the three of coins, there's always a sense of everyone has their expertise and we don't all, we can't all have expertise about everything, but everyone does have their expertise. And then together we can create, I want to say a superhuman with all of the expertise and we have all the abilities here. So I love that with three of coins and that's what you're looking for. This is your hope is to work with a team. I think, um, you know, it's hopes, fears, and inner landscape. So, um, so you might have a, a team inside your head uh, that you're working with. And in fears, you might be, you know, worried about um, the more negative aspects of teamwork, having people that are stubborn and inflexible or don't show up or teamwork trauma. I think we all have a little bit of that in our past too. Um, so, but you're making, you're, you're really trying to figure out, you're being very practical, you're thinking about career moves, and one of those is maybe teaming up with some people and figuring out how to make that happen. You want to work with other people. Um, you don't want to be a writer by yourself, you want to be in a writer's room. You don't want to be um, just working in your own studio anymore. You'd like to work with other artists somehow. Um, you don't want to be a sole proprietorship, you want to be a company now. That kind of idea. And then what's an issue here? Knight of Cups. We have Page of Cups, Queen of Coins, Knight of Cups, and Knight of Swords. Oh my goodness, there's a lot. There's too many people in this mix. There's a lot of people here. This makes this one, the ones you need fly close. This could be about fears about relationships, fears about group work, 
fears about, um, yeah, because there almost looks like there is a team here. There is already a team here. And you want to join the team. You're trying to maybe figure out how to join the team. So this Knight of Cups in reverse, this is someone either there's the cups. So bad relationship communication could be present here. We also have depression possible, um, anxiety, of course, because the cup's upside down. So the cup's drained, the cup's not holding the emotion, the cup's not full of delicious, delightful liquid that is going to make us tipsy. Um, this is no fun emotions and no fun communication. Talking about these fears and negativity, this could be you coming into a situation um, out of sorts emotionally, not well balanced. And the thing about the night is that they're communicative. So this could be someone who is very emotionally unbalanced and yet comes in with very strong communication, um, very forceful communication. This can also be someone with a lot of emotion that's not communicating at all. They have zipped their lip. There is a lot of emotion. There could be a lot of emotion here and someone hasn't said a word about it. They are not communicating about it. They are not saying anything about it. So that's two possibilities with this Knight of Cups. As someone who is full of emotions, um, this could also be you, but too afraid to communicate any of them because of past experiences, probably, most likely, you know, and this, this lack of faith here that things can be different in the future, that there can be different outcomes. Whoever is refusing to communicate or not communicating, someone has a lot of emotion. If this is the same person, they have a huge amount of emotion and feelings and they're not saying anything. This could be totally different people where one person might be gushing and the other person is really, um, you know, gushing emotionally and the other person is really not feeling it or disengaged. This Knight of Cups could be someone who either gets disengaged routinely or is very disengaged from their emotions and their feelings. So in your environment, you have Knight of Swords. So this is the communicator, communicator, truth communicator. And someone's coming in here to slay some dragons here. To <laughs> They're coming in to slay. Um, this is very precise courageous communication. There is someone around you who is courageous and will say what needs to be said, will do what needs to be done, right? Look, but you're, you're supposed to be the warrior woman, but we have, you can see someone who does this, who knows how to do this. And maybe it's like you see someone doing something and you want to do it too. There's a lot of fear holding you back here. Um, and it's just sort of been a vision so far of, I want to be like that. I want to say those things. I'm going to be more direct and more clear. And so maybe you can, you're seeing someone who has that ability, has developed that ability. Um, some of the most clear communicators I know were, um, very shy as children, quiet as children, but have learned over decades to speak up, to say something and to be more um, demanding and a, and a little more aggressive so that they get more, right? They've had to learn that skill. Um, so there is someone in your environment who's coming in with some really spicy communication, sharp communication, clearing things up. And maybe they don't even intend to. They're just like, what's that? That looks like that. And, and everyone else that knows the situation is like, well, it is like that, but no one was supposed to say anything. And so this isn't you. This is somebody else who's got some truth bombs. Uh, they're coming in with a lot of courage, a lot of courage. This needs to be respected, this courage, because especially if this person's been quiet so far or whatever, there, this could be the same person coming in with a lot of feelings. Um, and they're going to be incredibly courageous with speaking their mind. What's interesting is that, well, we don't have any wands here, but the whole thing feels a little spicy, but we've got um, coins, 
cups and swords. So feelings, communication, and plans. So someone has a plan. I, this queen of coins might not be you. This queen of coins could be somebody else. But what's interesting is we have um, coins, cups, and swords, and then we have the three of cups, all of them working, or the three of coins, all of them working together. And the, the coins talk about like a um, monetary or um, some sort of exchange. Like it's people's jobs. It's not just, um, or I mean, there it's their skill sets. It's skill sets. Uh, that are coming together it's not just hanging out together with friends it's like with a purpose to create something all right and then we have uh your to-do list 10 of swords i think we've gotten this so many times over the last year let it be over let it end release the negativity release the fears yes you have had these real painful experiences this is reminding me of just where we even began this reading you've had these real painful and difficult experiences. They are not to be ignored or um, dismissed or um, not to be ignored, dismissed. What is it? Minimized. You're not supposed to be minimizing these past experiences. Yes, they were painful in Ten of Swords. We have real painful experiences um, that you don't want to experience again but it's time to complete and end something. So we have 10 of swords followed by the world. So these are two cards back to back of completion and ending. This may be say the final things that you need to say because a situation is ending. You can't stop it from ending. You can't um, make it end any sooner. It's been very painful, very difficult, but it is coming to an end. And this is where it's time to release the negativity. Like. And then we've got even like this dog making fun of the whole thing, like, uh, um, and like, it's just, it's the ending though. It's the 10 of swords. It's completion. Some sort of really painful situation is totally over and you need to deal with sort of the sequelae of that. I want to say you need to deal with the PTSD, the bad memories that are going to, are coming with that. And that's how you complete this. It's like the actual painful experience is over there's just this like pause before we get going and we already had like the death and rebirth we have the firebird called to soar oh my gosh we had call your deepest calling and called to soar both of those right there this might actually be a phone call from someone that has something um very direct to say or is going to be very clear in their communication they're not going to pussyfoot around here they're clear in their communication so, um, so, but this is right. And then even the sword is communication too, um, because, and then we have the knight of swords and then we have the 10 of swords. It's like, you're having some sort of courage to complete a painful process and bring it to a close so that we can have a rebirth. So this is maybe like if you've had a relationship that kind of lingered or was, um, unclear on what it was. This is sort of like the final, I don't know, cut. I also want to say stitches. Um, like this, the last of the stitches have been put in and now we can start the healing process, right? Stitches aren't like a fabulous fun process. And in fact, it's a little counterintuitive. All right, here we have this bleedy thing. Let's stab it. Um, and with a needle and, um, and it's not comfortable. And it's not, it doesn't feel like healing, but the whole thing is once that final stitch is in, then there's, there can be some healing. There may be a scar, but we're not going to be actively bleeding anymore. So that's what 10 of swords means is let these stitches go in. We're going to finish stitching this up and then real healing can begin. So there might be one final stitch or one final thing that needs to be said, but basically this is closure, closure, closure. And not only is it closure, it's closure of the emotional wound, as well as whatever happened in reality. There's a closure and that's your next step. What's your next step here? Is there some sort of dealing with the fears that are left over after the attack, after, right, this man's been attacked. So the fears, and then this dog is representing the fears that will linger, that will linger after you've, after this situation ends. 
Um, so dealing with sort of fears of something that is in the past and in that way, allowing it to be even further in the past as you deal with that. And then we have the world card. So this brings you one step closer to completion and you are going to get over this. You are going to move on from something. There is going to be a death and rebirth with this queen of coins here. You have a plan for the next step. Um, possibly there's a step in between, like, how do I, how do I end this? How do I stop this situation and bring it to a close there could possibly be one more step there which might end up being a conversation just with all these swords here um, and it could just be also dealing with your own internal fears but the world card completion ending you've you it's over over and there's two cards of ending here it's over over um, so there might be one last thing to say one last thing to deal with why are you afraid to speak up? Why are you afraid to tell someone something? That doesn't necessarily mean, I mean, it, this Ten of Swords does kind of, and all the calling, and maybe you're the one calling somebody to just kind of, I don't know how that would bring closure. Sometimes we have to give ourselves closure. Um, most of the time we have to give ourselves closure. Actually, we always have to give ourselves closure. The other person can say whatever they want and do whatever they want, but... That closure comes from us and an internal process. So this Ten of Swords is the final step. Um, and, then, and then something's really, truly over. All right. Grasshopper spirit, take a leap of faith, right? We have the courage, releasing negativity. Yeah, it's a leap of faith. And we had a leap of faith last time too. So leap of faith. Maybe it's you that's flying close to those you love. Maybe you have this desire, but it hasn't come through yet. And there's like a couple more things you need to try. And one of them, right? We've been talking about taking a leap of faith. All right. And then their little prayer to end the moment. Okay. Two prayers. All right, leap of faith, we have followed up with trust, right? Both of these are, are things that, um, these are compatible. Trust what you feel the divine is communicating to you through the happenings around you. There is divine guidance in all things if we know how to feel and look for it. Through the heart without silencing our intuition with logic. So we have a lot of swords here. That's going to represent logic. Our cups are representing the heart. So listening to the heart and not um, silencing our intuition with logic. I think this has to do a lot with these releasing the fears and dealing with your fears, working through your fears to take a leap of faith. And then becoming friends with yourself. Why not try, no, why not give up trying to punish, push, or force your body? When you push, resistance is created. It's not defiance, it's the natural law. This can make life harder than it needs to be. Instead, why not explore and find a way to relate to your body as a friend? Friendship is one of life's pleasures. So taking care of your body, absolutely crucial. Your body loves you immensely, is doing everything in its power to keep you alive. Returning that love and affection for your body is crucial. And it, when the ones you need fly close. So maybe this is physically being around someone, but there's also just a sense of a friendship also here coming through here, even though this is friends with yourself, <laughs> right? There is a mirroring aspect. And maybe this is about being friends with some of your pokier parts, some of your stingers and appreciating those as well. Um, so becoming friends with yourself, and then I really liked this part too, when you push resistance is created. So this is talking about a process of allowing and not forcing an ending. The ending is coming. Something is going to finally come to an end. Um, but a, a cycle, a lesson, something will be ending completely. Um, but we don't have to force it. It can come very naturally and normally. And it doesn't, the more we force it, you know, that forcing, isn't that more related to fear? Like, I need to end this. I need to, because we're afraid of what if it takes longer than we want? What if it takes longer than we're comfortable for something to really end and be over? 
But I think that the only way to truly be over something is we can do a lot of work and a lot of thinking about it and a lot of planning about it and figuring it out. But in the end, that process is, it has a timing of its own. So I would say trusting in yourself, trusting in your process, trusting in the information your body gives you, your intuition and all of that, but not forcing an ending. I think there's a sense of trusting that what needs to end will end. We don't need to be like really jamming that home right now. The Ten of Swords always does seem like allow the ending to happen naturally and normally. All right. Well, I hope that this was helpful for you. Thank you so much for joining me and we'll talk again next week. Bye.